Welcome to the Diligent Minds Podcast, where you get practical steps to help you become the best version of yourself and achieve your goals. I'm your host, Dorian Jones. Let's get into it. Yo, what's going on, Diligent Minds community? We are back with another episode. We talking today to Joy. This is somebody that I met through Instagram because I was actually trying to speak at different places and she had her own event and I reached out to her and that's how we met. And we haven't talked much, but I was like, hold on, Joy is a cool person. I remember talking to her, seeing her doing her thing on social media. So let me have a conversation with her and just find out a little bit more because I don't know you. So as I'm as I'm interviewing you and we kind of in this conversation, I'm gonna learn just like the audience. So I'm excited for this episode right now. What's going on, Joy? How you doing? Absolutely. I'm happy to be here with you and I'm doing amazing because I can't. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You ready for the holidays? I am ready for the holidays. However, I probably view the holidays different than most people though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so and so I view the holidays different than most people because I think that our world has become so commercialized mm-hmm. that we get away from like the true spirit of what the holidays are really about. So I really focus on experiences, just in life period. I really mm-hmm. focus on experiences and moments in time. So it's a great time for my kids. And we can talk about that um, as we, as you get to know me and the audience get to know me. Um, my kids are now grown. So mm-hmm. having them like come home and like having us do like family dinner and family brunches and family games for the holidays is really special to me. Okay. Okay. So you just want to have those like you said, have those experiences and have those moments of time that you can cherish and remember. Yeah. Yeah. I want it to be less about like consumption of things and more about creating experiences and moments and memories that like we can look back and we can laugh and have fun and cherish years to come. Yeah. Like those pictures, they tell a thousand stories. What's the, what's the saying? Is that the saying? Yeah, pictures, pictures, uh, or tell it have a thousand words or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like you look at the picture and it takes you back to a moment in time. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. So tell me about yourself. You're from DC, right? Washington, DC, born and raised. Okay. Okay. So how was that growing up there? Were you like, how was your family dynamics? What were you like as a youngster? Like, tell me about yourself. Yeah. So my family dynamics, I am, um, my parents, they're they're married. They're still married to this day. And so are my grandparents. My grandparents this year celebrated their 67th wedding anniversary, okay. um, which is pretty awesome. And so my parents, I grew up with um, both my parents in my in this in the Washington D.C. area. So just FYI for people that don't know that much about D.C. D.C. is more so like a tri-state, even though D.C. is a state, but it's, it's a D.C., Maryland, and Virginia are pretty much all together. So it's called the DMV. So my family is really um, heavily populated in a DMV. So it's just really great being around family, having my parents around, my grandparents and cousins and all those things. So I had a really, really good um, bringing up that was really based in family principles, tradition, family morals, um, and really just putting your best foot forward in life. Mm-hmm. Okay, and growing up in D.C., so you were moving around through the DMV since you have family everywhere in Maryland and Virginia, right? Yeah, so it's, yeah. It, it, I mean, yes, yes and no, it's the same place. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how far is D.C. from Maryland and how far was it from Virginia, from where so you it's lived? Literally, it's literally like one street is D.C. and one street is Maryland, one street is Virginia, one street is D.C. So it's, it's literally that close where you can get to uh, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia all in a matter of 10 minutes. Ah, uh, OK, OK. So it's like that corner that kind of interact yeah. intersects and yeah. you get there. Okay. Yeah. Were you the oldest or did you have any siblings? No, I so I often say I have one sibling. I have a sister. Mm-hmm. Um, she is older than I am, but I call her my... Big little sister, because yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit of the big sister. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. You took on that role? Yeah, I. you know what? You know, I think that there are certain um, qualities that we're all gifted with, right? You know, who we are, we get an opportunity to find more about and explore ourselves. But I think there are innate things about each of us as humans that make us who we are. And those things even show up in our lives when we're kids. So I've always been the... 
um, kind of caretaker, the big sister, the one that people lean on, that even like I'm the friend that all the friends come and talk to, right? Like I'm the the person who need advice, need some answers, need a sounding board. Like I'm that need a solution, need to just somebody to listen. I've always been that thing. Or the person who's like, hey, let's do this this way. So. Sound like you've been that person where, where you were well-rounded and people look like, okay, she's knowledgeable. She has a, a different perspective on things. Let's go talk to Joy. Let's go holla at Joy real quick and see what she took, what she got to say about it. Yeah, so one thing I often say, you know, um, so as a coach, I often tell people, coaching is not is not just what I do. It's mm-hmm. literally who I am, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's, it's yes, I, I had training and I had, you know, the skills and everything, but innately, me wanting to see people reach their highest potential is just innately in me. In me. me wanting to help other people is innately in me. Me wanting to see just the best happen is innately in me. Mm-hmm. So going so going back a little bit further, let's let's take it back to high school and stuff. Did you know that you were like, what were your goals in high school when you were younger? What was that thing you're like? This is how my life going to turn out. This is what I'm going to do once I get out of high school. So, you know, in high school, I had it all planned out. Mm-hmm. I had it all planned out where I was going to graduate from high school and I was going to go to college. I was going to go to Hampton University, even though I'm D.C. So Howard would have been the place but Hampton was on my list. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm go to Hampton. I was going to do all these things. And I wanted to, to be an accountant, which that's where I, I ended up anyway. But I wanted to be an accountant and do marketing like when I was um, younger. And I'll tell you a little bit about that kind of what brings that full circle. Um, However, in high school, I was um, I was active. I played sports and, you know, all those things. But in my 12th grade year of high school, Mm -hmm. I got pregnant and that changed my whole trajectory of life. What sport did you play or what sport were you playing? So I played basketball. Basketball. Okay. For, for disclosure, for mm. disclosure, because we got to be honest and transparent. I was not that great. So yeah, you just on there being a bench warmer. He's like, let me do this. I need an extracurricular activity to play. I wasn't, I wasn't a bit. So one, I'm tall, right? Uh-huh. I'm tall, I'm five ten, which mm. is pretty tall for a female. So I was the tall one. I played, you know, forward and center because I was tall. And when you're tall, it's like you're tall. You should play basketball. But I'm <laughs> so such like a pretty girly girl type of. Mm person and yeah basketball wasn't like it was then like it is now there's just so many resources available now and there's so many different things that really helps people hone into their skill that just wasn't available when i was in high school yeah yeah not very true that's very true they got especially not for girls right right not now you got you got all type of stuff you got trainers you got everything you got I'm like man i had none of that when i was playing we just hey get out there and go play hey y'all go y'all gonna cool. run <laughs> That's it. So you had the you had your baby. Was this was this surprising to you? And what part of your uh, 12th grade year was this? Was it second semester, first semester? Yes, this was very much a surprise for me. This was at the end. So I graduated. I went to prom and walked across the stage with a belly. Mm -hmm. Um, My daughter was born in August. And that literally was a a change for me. So I'm I'm very, um, and always have been very goal oriented, very ambitious. So in high school, even before um, I got pregnant, I was, I've been working since I was 11. When I was 11, I started my own babysitter's club, right? Mm -hmm. I used to babysit for people in the neighborhood and all the things. Um, But when I started working in high school, I was working uh, three jobs and going to school at the same time. So I worked at High Pies, Foot Locker, and CVS and went to school. Like I, I had a half day schedule. <laughs> I had a half day schedule. So I I and I'm also a person that I um I'm driven by independence, mm-hmm. even though the more that I've the the older and wiser that I've gotten with, with, um, in life, I realized what independence really is and what independence really isn't. Mm-hmm. And it was important to me as a young kid. Um these are just the dynamics of family. My mom didn't work. She was a stay-at-home mom, and she um, depended on my dad. The amount of dependency that I saw that my mom had on my dad, mm-hmm. I made a decision long ago when I was a kid. I will never be dependent on somebody like that. 
right? Yeah. And it was just all, it was just like, even as a teenager, I'm going to go work, I'm going to get, I'm make my own money, I'm going to buy my own stuff, I'm going to do my own thing and not depend on anybody. So from a young age, I had that kind of go-getter uh-huh. kind of personality. Yeah, expect. I think that was a lot of a lot of families back in like back before before kind of our generation. I think we, you know, we kind of changed that as time went on. A lot of the things that happened with with the man being the head of the household, being the one to come home, make the money, let the woman spend it or distribute it through the household, and it wasn't she. You know, of course, she had some say. So she go do her thing. She was strong, but as far as the end of dependence on that like if that man left it's like dang what we gonna do now like what we got to figure something out so you always so a lot of a lot of families miss that dynamic of of having a a balance of the two with the woman and the man both being i wouldn't say equal as far as humans but equal as far as the responsibilities financially in the household yeah Yeah. oh sorry equal contribution yeah yeah there we go or or just being able to One, let me, I'm going to take this back a little. I think that um, being a mom, uh, a lot of women are prone to losing their identity, Mm -hmm. right? They're prone to losing what's important to them. They're prone to allowing, and and not that, not allowing, but having, being in a place where kids become priority, your spouse become priority, and you get put on the back burner. And that's what I saw happened with my mom like she became less important in her life because everything else and everybody else was more important um which i commend her for all that she did she's loving she's caring she's nurturing but i more so replicated a lot of my dad's behaviors Mm -hmm. like i'm definitely my dad's child like he was (laughs) he was ambitious he's gonna go try the thing he's gonna go take the risk he's gonna do the thing and i and i took those parts on whereas you know, being raised in a um, in a family where it's just my sister and I, my dad didn't have any sons, but I longed for something from my dad. Mm-hmm. So I was almost wanted to be like the son my dad never had. So I would wash the truck with him. I would he would ch- uh, show me how to change oil and change my tires and mm-hmm. like you know. <laughs> play sports and I'm mean, I'm still a girly girl, but there was this thing of I, I was looking for finding ways to find connection with my dad mm-hmm. because he's in a house with a whole bunch of females. So <laughs> being in that kind of space, there's like certain things about um his go-getterness. I just made that word up, but mm-hmm. his go-getterness that mm-hmm. that I'm more so aligned with than the than the I don't know what I want to call than the opposite of my mom. No. And did you start taking on this role or start to notice that you want to hang around with him when you got older, as you start to notice things and become more aware? Or was it no. something that you always did as a kid? It's all something I always did as a kid, mm-hmm. like okay. always, even from young, from a young kid. So my dad used to take us um, on bikes, a bike ride. My dad used to have a boat. So we used to go mm-hmm. fishing. He used to take us. His boat was called Mellow Yellow. <laughs> so go on mellow yellow and go fishing. So he used to, you know, teach us how to put the the worm on the hook and all, even though it was totally nasty and gross to me, but those are things that he kind of exposed um, my sister and I to. And, and for me, I, from a young kid, like I was definitely a daddy's girl. Okay. All right. So going back to, to high school, when you had your uh, daughter, did you, did you feel like, like, what am I going to do now? Or did you know, like, all right, I'm going I'm to figure this out. I'm about to get this together. I'm going to go ahead and just tone things in. And how did it change your plan that you have for yourself? You're like, I'm going to college. What part changed and what stayed the same? And how did you handle all that? Yeah. So um, for me, I am a person that um, don't tell me what I can't do. Mm-hmm. Because if you tell me what I can't do, I'm going to prove you wrong that I can like right. that's the type of personality that I that I encompass. And so when I got pregnant in high school in my 12th grade year, um, it was kind of I was so, so, so adamant, one, that I wasn't going to become a statistic, a statistic, that I wasn't going to depend on anybody, that I was going to do whatever I had to do to be the best mom that I can be and really make a difference. And I actually end up getting married um, right out of high school. So I, I grew up in a Christian 
household and the dynamics of religion drove my choice, my choices at that time to get married because I quote unquote thought it was the right thing to do, right? Like yeah. you, get you get married. Like that was kind of how religion was was when I was growing up. Uh-huh. FYI, FYI, my dad became a pastor when I was 13 or 14 years old. Mm-hmm. The most traumatic thing that a kid can go through. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like becoming a teenager and your dad is a pastor. Like I remember my dad um when I was in, in high school, people used to call my house because this was a long time ago. So people used to call the call the house in order to talk. My dad used to answer the phone. Praise the Lord. And everybody used to, like, I used to go to school. They used to joke. And I, I remember this kid in, in um, high school, every time he told me, he would say, praise the Lord, like mocking my dad. They know yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so out of high school, I got married. And mm-hmm. I just immediately entered in the adult world. So at the age of 19, 18, 19 years old, mm-hmm. I was living a life of a 35 year old, right? Like yeah. I'm, I'm married. Um, I'm, I'm working in corporate America. Well, I think I, I so I started out in banking, um, mm-hmm. but I'm working, I'm married. We got this kid. And then we had another kid um, two years later after that. And then another kid three years later. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? Like a mom of, and I was going to school at night. So I had a lot on my plate of being a wife, being a mom, being in the working world and going to school at night. So, yeah. So your plate was full and and you knew, but you knew you were determined to to reach your I, goal. You knew you was like, I'm going to get there. I was absolutely uh-huh. determined. I was determined that nobody was going to write the narrative for my story. Mm-hmm. Nobody was going to tell me what I wasn't going to do and how I wasn't going to do it and how life was going to be hard and all the things that people tell you. I was and I did it like with little help. I ended I did end up getting a divorce um after being married for seven years. I got a divorce and I was even more I was even more um committed to making sure that I did amazing even yeah. even in a divorce. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. And that and that's the thing. When you get into stuff and life just throws things at you and never goes as you plan you always thrown different um different curveballs into your life and then you it's always about how you respond to it that's the main thing life is about response now often repeat um the good old philosopher andre 3000 you know Mm -hmm. you can paint a perfect picture but you can't predict the weather Mm -hmm. exactly you can you can have the you can have whatever perfect plan that you want to have and i think that is good for us as people to plan, right? Because if you don't have a port to go, the wind will blow you to nowhere, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you got to have a destination that you're selling. So you got to have a destination that you're working towards. Now, the journey to get to that destination mm-hmm. may not be as clear cut. Actually, it's never as clear cut as you imagine it because life just happens, right? Yeah. But you, I think that's what builds character. Mm-hmm. That's what builds, that's what builds, um, that's what builds what's needed for us to really become well-rounded individuals. We figure out how to work through problems. We figure out how to overcome and knowing that no matter what we go through, no matter what we face, like all things work out. It mm-hmm. never just rains forever. The sun never just shines forever. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's the sun rises and it sets. It's the right. cycle of life. We just figure out how to, how to work through it. Right. And that's just like you said, having that destination is very important because you're going to get through every way. But if you know, like, nope, hey, we got tossed way over here into the tide. That's where we going, though. We got to stay on the path. We got to start to turn this boat a little bit and we're going to get over there. We're going to reach our destination. We got a plan. We got a vision. We see it. It's a little cloudy right now, but we know we're going to get through this storm. So yeah. that's important. Yeah. You know, shoot for the... You know, shoot for the moon. You're laying amongst the stars, right? Like, exactly. No matter, no matter what, if you shoot up, you're going to land amongst the stars regardless. So Exactly. It's about, it's about not being discouraged when things don't always go your way, right? Mm-hmm. Not 
not allowing circumstances to hold you down. Now, I've had a whole bunch of circumstances, as you can probably imagine, you know, being a young mother, being a young wife, being a young divorcee, like going to school at night in corporate America as the youngest, typically the youngest person. All of my friends are at college and having a good time, and I'm here living this <laughs> old adult life, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so all of those things, you know, it had its challenges that that came. There was a lot of things that I had to learn. There's a lot of things that life life taught me. Life will teach you a lot of lessons. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. What was one of your toughest moments during that time when you were when you were juggling all these things? What was some of the what was one of the moments or a few of the moments where you was like, you know what? I don't even know if this is all worth it. I just want to just want to quit. Let me just sit down. Like I, It sound it don't sound like you probably had those moments, but I know that everybody come across those those times where we were like, oh, man, let me you let know, me figure this out. You know what's so funny about that? And I just had this conversation the other day. So the other day I have a great nephew. Mm-hmm. Um, and I watched him the other day. He's um, he'll he'll be one years old next next month. And I watched him. And as I was watching him, one my kids are older. I don't have any young kids around me. I get kids every once in a while when somebody needs some help. But mm-hmm. I watched my great nephew the other day. And as I was watching him, it wore me out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, kudos to moms because I don't know how moms do this. And it had me reflect on my own journey as a mother. Mm-hmm. You'd ask like, what was the hardest moment? I don't know. I, mm-hmm. I when I look back and I figured out how did I make it right? Mm-hmm. How did I make it making thirty five thousand dollars a year working at a bank? You know what I mean? Like forty thousand dollars a year working at a bank, <laughs> taking care of three kids. Mm-hmm. When I look at that now, I'm like, <laughs> how the world did that happen? It was like in the moment, whatever is needed in the moment. You figure it out. You don't have time to sit back and sit on the side and be like, oh, whoa, it's me. You mm-hmm. yeah. You don't have time to even think that. Yeah, right? life is moving. And not only that life is moving, I got these three little humans that are looking for me for the answer. I got these three little humans that are looking for me to be the example. I got these three little humans that are looking for me to provide resources, to give guidance and they were my motivators to, you know what I mean? Like to provide them a better opportunity, the best opportunity that I can provide them without becoming, quote unquote, a, a statistic, right? Without right. falling into somebody else's narrative that they created. Like, yeah. 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 And that's one thing that that I always thought about, too, just being that statistic. I'm like, nah, I don't want to be I don't want to. I'm not saying this, you know, not shooting down anybody that fall into that, because I know it's so easy for us to choose the decision to follow the path of of what everyone else is doing around us. It's that's always easy. the hardest thing. It's to, because those, that pathway is easier to choose. It's already paid for you. It's already right yeah. there for you. You <laughs> like you to choose the path that's already somebody else already wrote for you. Mm-hmm. They already they already going they already got the answers of what's going to happen, right? Yeah, it's, it's easy, but it takes it takes something in you different to want something different. I believe that all of us have um, a fire that's ignited in us that that I feel like never goes away as long as we have breath in our body, as long as we have the ability of our limbs, I think that there's always something inside of every person that says, you know, you can get more, Mm -hmm. you know, you can become more, you know, you can do more like, and you, but you have to find something that ignites that fire within you. So Mm -hmm. you can go full head, full head and create the narrative that you want for your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like you got to. And for some people that that fuel don't come until until they hit like a low, low point. Some people are like, you know, what? I got to get it together. I have to get it together. Sometimes they just cruising and they comfortable and they feel like, you know what? I'm cool. I'm getting by. I'm making a decent living. I'm good right now. But then you hit that one low moment and you're like, dang, hold on. Like, I don't have it all together. Like, I really need you to get my I, stuff together. You know what I think that really makes a difference? Mm-hmm. It's. Uh, is environment in which you're exposed to. I have this saying that I usually say, you can only be, you can only expand to the point of of what you're exposed, Mm -hmm. right? And oftentimes, if you're only exposed to the same thing, 
you're only going to expand, but so much, right? And it's almost like, I'm not sure, have you ever heard of the metaphor of like the, uh, maybe it's like a shark in a tank or something or. Yeah, it only grows as big as the environment. Yeah. And mm-hmm. even, even there's another, there was this another um, scientific study that was done about this lion. And so um, a tiger or lion, they put this tiger and lion inside like this box, right? And mm-hmm. they had like these parameters that had them stuck in this like little, little box. And the lion was just stayed there after they had trained the lion about the box and what his boundaries and parameters were, they took the boundaries off, but he was so accustomed to what they had created for him. Even when they took the boundaries off, he still stayed in the same, in the same box. Sometimes that's how people are. Right. And, and I even think about just how amazing the world is right now. I think we live in an amazing world where you and I, who live in two totally different places, you're all the way in Arizona and I'm all the way in Washington, D.C., yet we have the ability to meet like this because of technology and exposure and just being around people who are like-minded and be around people who are ambitious wish, ambitious and growth-minded and all those things. It creates something different than what life was back in the 70s and 80s and 60s mm-hmm. that your community was only the people who you were around. So there was no diversification unless you went into the military, unless something happened, you know, you went to college and birth, a lot of people of color just weren't going to college like they were now back yeah, then. Yeah. So being exposed to different, we were trapped in a way where we stayed in our silos mm-hmm. and we didn't get exposed, which means that we weren't expanding as people. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. Let's fast forward it real quick to, so you work in everything, you get a divorce. Where was life? How did life look after that? So life looked like, um, it was kind of uphill for me, actually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, when I when I got a divorce, it opened up possibilities of who I can become as a person, right? Um, and the other part that's the benefit to divorce or co-parenting is it allowed me not to have to be mom 365 days, 24 seven, right? There was some split time, which I think, I think that both parent, two parent households are absolutely amazing and have absolute benefit. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a two parent household, usually you're on all the time. As a divorced mom of kids, I had a chance to at least get a breather because the kids went with their dad sometimes, they were with me sometimes. So it was like I also had a chance to find myself without, you know, being able to kind of put all the responsibilities down for a second, even if it was just for the weekend, Mm -hmm. to take a breather and rejuvenate. And through those processes, I was just really committed to doing the best. And my kids were my first coaching clients. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, they were they were my first coaching clients as a mom I just had a different perspective of how I wanted to be a mom um mm-hmm. I didn't want to be a mom like I was raised where it was about you know there was a lot of spankings a lot of punishment a lot of mm-hmm. do this do as I say not as I you know do what I tell you not don't question me don't talk back don't have a voice type of thing I didn't want to raise my kids like that so I became my kids coach I became, I'm an advocate for whoever you want to be in life. I'm going to help guide you, but I'm not going to be the hero of your story. I'm just going to help you in places to show you different ways, but I need you to speak up for yourself. I need you to know what you want and I need you to be able to willing to try things. And when you try it, being able to accept the consequences as well as the reward. So it was, it was uphill. And I did that too, while also working in corporate America and working my way through corporate America and yeah, it, trying to, trying to manage <laughs> all the things of life. Yeah. So it sounds like after the divorce, it was that it was kind of a, a break and a breather that you needed at times. It was like, okay, we going through this. I'm pretty sure it was like, you know, you had your doubts about it and going through the old, all of the emotions and things like that. Just like, dang, we really going our separate ways. But in hindsight, you looked at it like, you know what? We're going to make this work and this is how it's going to be beneficial. And then you notice that as you as you guys were doing that co-parenting and you was like, OK, this isn't this is not too bad. Like, I'm over here oh, like, I'm oh, good. No, no, no. Don't get it confused. It was bad. Uh-huh. Yeah. OK, OK. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, were, 
it wasn't as it wasn't as peachy as uh-huh. no it was it was definitely challenging it was yeah. definitely some things that again that learning how to co-parent is one mm-hmm. is a skill that you have to practice you it's, mm-hmm. it's something that you have to really put into play um so it wasn't it wasn't like a a yellow brick road that took me to the Wizard of Oz. It mm. was, yeah, it was like the, yeah. <laughs> it was like the jungle out there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, but, got you. But it, but it, but it worked out, and it taught me just. I learned so much. More importantly, I learned so much about myself. Mm. I learned so much about. I became inquisitive about people, which led me to um, coaching, and led me to want to have a servant's heart. So I've always wanted to be in a place of serving others and helping others. But it led me to a pathway that was the pathway that was meant for me. Okay. And as you did that, were you still in banking? What time? When did you get out of banking? No, no, no. I got out of banking way in the beginning. I was only in banking um, for maybe a year or two. And then I got into um, accounting. So I started my accounting journey um, Mm -hmm. and became an accountant. Uh, And I worked in corporate America. I worked in a lot of different um, industries. One of the best... um, corporate America experience and jobs that I had was actually working at um, BET. So I worked at BET as an accountant Uh and working there just exposed me to so many things. And the thing that exposed me to the most, I'm so proud to that. I worked in law firms. I worked in manufacturing, all doing accounting work Mm -hmm. um, and in nonprofit sectors, just in a lot of different uh, arenas. But when I got to BET, it was like, almost like a holy mecca of all of these professional people of color who are doing amazing, who are, it was just, just to be around the environment of everybody around you is, looks like you Mm -hmm. and everybody around you is doing extremely well and is, you know, professional. It was, it was just really, um, really good. There were lots of challenges. Um, There was, it came with challenges, Mm -hmm. but that was like, you know, just an exposure for me that really, um, really changed a lot of things for me. Uh-huh. Oh, good. So you were doing that. And did you say you enjoyed accounting? Like that was like one thing that you really enjoyed or did it burn you out? No, 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 no. It didn't burn me out, but mm-hmm. I don't have an accountant's personality. I need people. Like yeah, I don't okay. need, to, like I need more than just crunching numbers. So um, one thing that shifted for me is um, after I left uh, um, BET, I ended up uh, working at this um, IT consulting firm. And there I was the account, uh, accounting manager, but I also was like the right hand to the CEO and I, I wore a lot of hats. And I, actually, that was a, actually another job that I learned so much, especially about entrepreneurship. That was like my my basis of entrepreneurship, seeing all the things of this multi-million dollar business run and, and all the different components. Um, my life was changed, actually. I went to a conference for the CEO who couldn't make it to a conference, and I stood in as proxy when I went to that conference. It was a personal development uh, leadership conference. Mm-hmm. I had never been exposed to that before. That was back in 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I went there, it was all, almost like a kid in a candy store. Like, it was like gold. And at that moment when I was there, like, I was like, ah. Oh, I never knew what I wanted to do in life, like really, really do until Mm -hmm. now. Like that moment changed my life forever. And somebody who was very beneficial in my life since then, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Darren Hardy, but Mm -hmm. he's been some, he was a speaker at that conference and he's been somebody that I followed um, since 2011. He's been very instrumental as a arm distance mentor um, Mm -hmm. of just learning so many different things and exposing and opening up our, I open up possibilities for myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think I remember, and this kind of sounds familiar because when we were talking about you with your conference, you were telling me about the, about this. And I think I know who you're talking about as far as the CEO and all that stuff. It's uh, yeah. TJ, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 TJ. Yeah. Cause I came across him on YouTube cause I like cars and he had his cars and stuff. So I'm like, okay, that's pretty dope. So, yeah. I, okay. Now it's, it's, now it's come full circle where where you find a personal development and you like, you fall in love with this thing. You're like, you know what? This is dope. Like, this is what I've been looking for. This is like the, the, the fuel and the, the uh, food that my soul been looking for. Like, this just really speaks to me. What was it about it though? That, that made you like, you know what? I love this. Like, this is, this is my calling. Uh It was everything. So one, 
Um, I went to this conference. This conference was in California, it was in Santa Clara, California. It was like a 10X Academies conference that uh, Brendan Bashar put on. I'm not sure mm-hmm. if you're familiar with Brendan Bashar, but yeah. he's an amazing, um, an amazing speaker, an amazing facilitator. And when I went there, it was probably about a good 700 people in a room. Maybe that that I could be underestimating that. But when I went in a room and I'm there, I'm looking all around. Now, remind, just reminding you that I went to this conference in proxy of the CEO of the company, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not the CEO. I'm just an accountant. Yeah. So I'm in the room with all of these entrepreneurs. I'm in the room with all these people who got these businesses who are doing amazing creative things. And it was just amazing just networking with everybody. Um, one thing that was most amazing to me or was kind of was that thing that really struck me was I look around at all of these 700 faces in a room and I can count on two hands how many people color I saw. Yeah. Like, yeah. Two. And it was like, wow. And actually, yeah, it was just maybe two hands, right? Mm-hmm. And I was sitting there thinking, all of this gold that's being shared about leadership development, about entrepreneurship, about finances, and finances are different. This is not finances of being an accountant, right? Yeah. This is finances of tools and strategies and things like that. This, is, this isn't this is stuff you learn in being an accountant. This is mm-hmm. stuff that is just more meaty um, about investments and about real estate and all of these things. I'm like, how come? In my mind, I ask myself, how come I've never been exposed to this? How come Mm -hmm. nobody in my environment is talking about this? How come this information isn't shared of books to read or courses to take or anything? And I made a I made a commitment when I left there. Um, You know what? I'm here for a reason. This isn't being shared in my community, in my neighborhood. I'm going to be the one to share it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy you say that because that's kind of how my discovery of personal development came along. I actually went to a conference that Damon John was holding because at the time I had a clothing brand. So in my mind, I had my backpack in there. I had some jackets. I had some shirts. I'm like, I'm going to give him these clothes and then my stuff going to just take off. And next thing you know, you got this dude come up there. And the same thing, it was it was only a few people of color that look like myself. And this guy come up there talking about tax loopholes, how he get paid to take vacations and and all these things. I'm like, oh, that's pretty dope. So I got into real estate investing. I started learning about that. And then eventually I stumbled up on being that that face for personal development. I want to I want to because I feel like as as color people, we don't look at personal development as something that we going to dive into because it's boring. It's like it's just not there. It's not exposed to us in a language that we understand. So my thing, like as I went along my journey. I'm like, I'm going to make personal development easy and approachable for the average person. I don't want to make it so complicated to where you feel like, man, you're talking over my head or I'm, I'm trying. To, I'm not trying to hear that. I just speak to you, like, just give it to you straight facts. Like, this is what you need to do. Like, you really got to go out there and put your mind to it. Do all this. This is how you do it. I really just put myself in that position because I knew it's going to be some people that don't want to listen to it. Then it's going to be people that's like, you know what, damn, he really talking some real stuff. I've been knowing this, but now I'm, I got somebody that, that look like me, that understands me, that's telling me all this stuff. So that's what, that was the purpose behind the podcast, the purpose behind everything that I do is to help people become better, but not just people, but people of color specifically. Of course, it branches out and falls out of those parameters as well. But that was my purpose for doing everything that I do now. It's like, nah, we got to, we got to do better. It's a lot that we're not exposed to. Yeah, you know, and I think that I think the most important thing for me, what has helped in my journey of personal development and leadership development and being a coach and kind of helping people in life and business, really inspiring people and encouraging people to really tap into thinking, right? Mm-hmm. That's what it's, it's literally asking the question, what do you want? Mm-hmm. Sometimes in our communities, we really haven't really delved into what do you want? Like, yeah. because we think that it's not possible. What we really want, we only see it on TV or we only see it people playing sports or football or basketball. And it's like the, the, the role to success. One, you have to self-define what success means for you. And it can't be about money. Mm-hmm. Like it, if it's about money, it's, it's not going to go well. Right. right. 
is not gonna, it's just not, it has to be about more than money. Now you can get money in the process and you should get money in the process, but it has to be something that connects to a why that's way bigger than the dollar. And yeah, being able yeah. to help people really understand that you can have what you want and it's possible, it's possible for you. And it's about creating the possibility of what, and then not just the possibility, but the actions and the behaviors and who you get a chance to become in the process of mm-hmm. reaching who you want to be. Like mm-hmm. it's all there, but we need people around like you and I and other people who can help um, encourage, who can help open up those portals and who can help create that exposure for yeah. people to really make some different choices. And so they can create the life that they really want and live it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Equip them with the tools and the mindset to go out there and get it. So any adversity they faced and all that, you able to get over. You like, you know what? I faced this before, and then you become more of an. You don't face. You don't see obstacles as as obstacles. You look at it as an opportunity to learn. Like, all right, yeah. what can I learn from this? How can I? How can I grow from here? Absolutely, so, and and I think it's too about the pivot. Mm-hmm. This, you, you got this. So I, I play basketball, right? So you know you play basketball, mm-hmm. like. You can pivot all you want, just as long as you don't pick up that other foot. But there are moments where you got to pivot and you got to pivot around, around, around until you find that opening spot that gives you the drive to the basket or that gets you away from the opponent. You got That's how life and business is. You yeah. got to know how to pivot, when, it, when to pivot and have, a, have an eye to know where your open spots to the goal is going to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So leaving this conference. What did you did you change and say, you know what, I'm getting out of accounting um, or did you stay in accounting? You was like, I'm going to just do this on the side. And like, what was that transition like? No. So that was that was in 2011. No, I stayed in. So when I was there, I talked to this guy. His name is uh, Jeffrey Godemeyer. He wrote the book, The Little Black Book of Sales, Little mm-hmm. Red Book of Sales. He has two. Uh, when I was there, um, I talked with him and he said to me at that particular moment, this was, again, this was 2011. He was like, you should write a blog about being a single mother. Like, you know, it's so good. However, I had no idea what he was talking about. I had no idea what a blog was. I had no idea how to start. I had no idea <laughs> anything. But it was motivating because he opened up possibilities for me, right? Mm-hmm. He exposed me to something that I hadn't been exposed to. Once somebody exposed you to knowledge, you can't unlearn what you learn, right? Well, right. you can. But right. once you know it, you know, you know, you, you know it. Mm-hmm. Um, so... When I came back, I was like, all right, yeah, I'm going to write a blog. But then <laughs> I came back to life. <laughs> right. I came back to being a mom of three kids and working a job. And that was my norm. So I did not really dive into it. However, had I had I took action on that, woo, 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 would life be different, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't start. I didn't change anything in my life from a from the um, stance of my career. Uh, being an accountant until 2016 when I started out. I started a nonprofit organization, a nonprofit is called Inspiring Joy. Um, and it's uh inspiring the journey of you. I started that as a nonprofit organization where that was really at that time catered towards young adults teaching um life success skills, personal and professional development, as well as financial literacy. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then that that was like a metamorphosis into my coaching pathway in my my coaching career my coaching business so but it started the thing the 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 seed was planted and mm-hmm. it started with a nonprofit and so I still have a nonprofit now but the nonprofit has a different focus now mm-hmm. the nonprofit has an initiative called um the hope grant and it's called helping other people evolve and it's about the collective contributing to help other people evolve in business and evolve in life when they also also provided micro grants as well as coaching to um businesses and individuals. Okay. So that's kind of where you at now today. You that's, there and doing that. That's that's one, yes. That's one way that I give back. And mm-hmm. then I still have my um coaching consulting business. My focus now, because I, I pivoted a little bit, mm-hmm. I thought when I got into this journey, I thought that I had to divorce my whole career as an accountant. I thought uh-huh. I had to leave it all away and create this new pathway of being a coach as life teaches you what life needs to teach you. Life and business are coherent. Are coherent. They, they're, they're congruent. They work together. And I realized that um, I have a, 
a, a very in-depth knowledge base and experience from business and from finances and accounting side. And I have a love, 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 and I'm an advocate for small businesses and people doing those things. So as well as people doing really great things in life and growing in their personal, um, personal professional development. So my pivot is to help support entrepreneurs and small business that, you know, from a business perspective, helping entrepreneurs do the business of business, as well as helping people thrive and survive and create the life that they want. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's where you're at now. Okay. This sounds exciting. Sounds fun. It's like, it's fulfilling work, especially when you see somebody's like, dang, like you really helped me get to this point. You were a part of my journey and just knowing that, just getting those words of, uh, of gratification, they're gratifying. I was about to say words of gratification, but they're gratifying words. It's a gratifying form of work. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. And how yeah. do your kids feel about it? How do they look at it now? Are they like, did they take on a lot of these principles and things that you put onto them? So, you know, what's funny is um, kids are going to learn at their own time frame. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're going to observe, absorb when they're ready to absorb. Mm-hmm. And though I... At one, I I pat myself on the back for the mom that I was to my kids. I think that I was an amazing mom because I had some amazing kids. Um, but certain things it didn't register to them until like mm-hmm. later. My daughter, my actually my oldest daughter, she said to me the other day, she was like, "Mom, I should have listened to you a long time ago. Like you were." She was <laughs> like, "I don't want to tell you that she was right, but I should have listened to you a long time ago." I said, "Yeah." I wasn't telling you anything wrong, but I was going to allow you to take your own path and figure it out, you know. Mm-hmm. When so, yeah, they're, they're very appreciative of of the mother that they have and okay. and what That's, I created for them. So, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Yeah, because you were an example. So they're able to see like, okay, my mom did it. And like you said, they're going to come to it at their own time. So that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And, right. and they come to me and, you know what I mean? It's also a space for them to come to me without any judgment. Right. Like, you know, without any judgment, without me trying to tell them what to do. But again, approaching that relationship as their coach, like Mm -hmm. I'm not here to give you the answers, but I'm here to help support you, explore the answers and figure out what's best for you. So they know that I'm a sounding board for them as well, that they can come and talk to me about anything, no matter what it is for them to figure out what's best for them. Okay, that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. That's good. It's, that's dope though, because you know those those your offsprings. You like okay, I'm all right now. You see it coming together. And you see what I'm trying to tell you. You picking it up, and just seeing them thrive in their life. That's the that's the best thing. Like seeing them thrive. Like seeing them go through all the all the transitions and everything that life throws at you. You like all right. Like you gonna you gonna get through this. Like and then you see them get through. You like okay, I know you could do it. It's like watching. It's like watching a movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sitting, on the, sitting on the sidelines watching the movie. Yeah. All right. If we get to come to a close, I just want to ask you a few questions that I ask all my guests. Sure. So first things come to mind, or you want to take time to think about this on you, it's your call. First question is if they made a movie about your life, what title will best describe it? Oh, um, oh. <laughs> it could be a movie or a book, either one. A movie or a book would be, or it would be a movie, and it would be called The Cost of Joy. The, co- the Cost of Joy or The Cross of Joy? The Cost. The Cost. Okay. All right. All right. And I it think costs, that's self-explanatory. It costs a little something to have joy in your life. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. One word that best describes you and your journey. Uh, one word that best describes me in my journey would be... Intentional. Share an interesting fact that not too many people know about you, even people that's close to you. Something interesting that people don't know about me is probably that I I became a plant mom. Mm-hmm. I think that's I think yeah. that's something interesting. Like I'm a plant mom. Just like <laughs> you got all those plants behind you. Um, but I feel like that's not interesting enough. Uh. Yeah, give us something else. That's, uh, know, that's that sound fine. old. That's it. That goes you back being your old 35-year-old self at 19. Oh, <laughs> give us something else. <laughs> Let me see. Um I am stumped. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that lets you know you need to go out and do some more things. That you got to get out there and do something so else. So I I do so I guess something interesting mm-hmm. is 
I'm not a person that fits inside a box. I am. I live my life outside of the box. So I like all things. I love sports. I love every sport. I love the outside. I love being active. I love cooking. I love reading. I love culture. I love museums. I love. There's nothing that I don't love. Like yeah. So something about me that will be interesting is that like I have this mantra that I want to go everywhere I haven't been. Like I want to explore the world. I want to meet all the people. I love strangers. I want to meet all the people, all the strangers. Like because strangers become your friends. Like, right, you right. Know? Yeah, yeah. You can connect. That's the thing about meet strangers. It's always a common ground that we could find with any human on this earth. Absolutely. It's always a common ground. Like whether you speak the same language or not, it's gonna be something in common that you got with them. The one common thing is like you got breath in your body and I got breath in my body. We can That's start, it. start with yeah. that baby time. We're both here. Exactly. We're here for a short time. We're here for a good time, not a long time. That's it. So let's enjoy it. All right. Next question. Whose brain would you like to pick, dead or alive? Michelle Obama. Why? Because I think that she's an amazing um, woman of character, of morals, of also like fun and supportive and ambitious mm -hmm. and um, really stands firm in her role and who she is as a woman. Mm -hmm. And I love that about her. Have you ever met? I wouldn't say met her, but well, have you ever met her or seen her in person, especially being in DC? I have not actually. Yeah. Okay. So they do they move in? Would you say when the president move around the city and when they doing things, do they move in secrecy? Or I know they got the uh, big briquets and they got the security. Yeah, no, they, and all just, that. They, they shut down all the roads and yeah. traffic gets bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We get into uh, the second to last question. What is one of the most valuable lessons that you've learned so far? Um, one of the most valuable lessons that I learned is life is what you make it. We're always at choice and we have the choice to create the life that we want. All right. Last question. What's one thing you'd like people to take away from our conversation? If they don't remember anything else through this conversation, they just like they brain went dead. What's something you want them to remember? Once they get off of this uh, podcast episode. So I think one thing that I want them to remember is that whatever that they want in life, that they're able to do it, be it and create it. Like the possibilities are endless when okay. you when you put the work in. All right. All right. It's a good tip. Good tip. So where can people find you if people were looking to connect with you? They want to know more about you, where they can find you. I'm gonna put show, I'm put links in the show notes so they'll be able to click on those. But I'll let you tell the people as well. So I can be found on all social media platforms at Inspiring Joy Inc., as well as my website, Inspiring Joy Inc. Okay, and the links to that will be down below. I want to say thank you so much. Well, actually, is there anything that we have in before we close it out? Is there anything that you feel we didn't cover, or feel that we didn't talk about enough that you just want to get off your chest or something that you want to have a conversation about? Nope. I think that we're good. I think we had a good conversation. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, I want to say thank you again for do taking out the time to do this for me or do this with me and had this conversation. And, you know, I enjoyed it. I learned a lot about you and it's exciting. And it's exciting to know that there's other people out there doing the same things that have the same as similar aspirations to change the world and help other people become better. So I thank you for that. Thank you for the work that you're doing and wish you and your family happy holidays. Happy New Year. And all that stuff. I just wish nothing but positive and good for you and every all the listeners as well. And going into this 2023, uh, everybody go out there and enjoy your day. And remember, everybody has greatness within, even you. Peace.